imagine you're working a regular ER shift and you're presented with Hank, who is a five-year-old boxer who became lethargic, anorexic, and developed diarrhea that had started about three days before the presentation to your hospital. Of course, the owner is elected to bring Hank to the emergency clinic on a Friday night. His physical examination showed normal body temperature at 99.5 Fahrenheit or 37.5 Celsius, elevated heart rate at 160 beats per minute, as well as normal respiratory rate and effort. He appeared to be mildly dehydrated and he had fair femoral pulses. His mucous membranes were pale pink with capillary fill time or CRT of three seconds. His systolic blood pressure that was measured with Doppler was 85 millimeters of mercury. Since multiple perfusion parameters in Hank appeared to be abnormal, it would be fair to say that he was likely in a shock state. Therefore, it was elected to perform a point of care ultrasound to further characterize the type of shock he had. In addition, an abbreviated blood work was run to obtain a minimal database which included acid base and electrolyte parameters. His venous blood gas showed the following results. Low pH, low partial pressure of CO2, markedly decreased bicarbonate and base excess, elevated sodium, decreased potassium, elevated chloride, as well as creatinine. We are going to address Hank's hypokalemia, low potassium of three millimoles per liter. Potassium is a very important electrolyte, and there are a lot of nuances in terms of abnormal potassium concentration diagnosis and treatment. To make it simple, we are going to divide all causes of low plasma potassium into three big categories. One, it's a reduced intake of potassium. Second, it's a intracellular shifting of potassium. And the third is increased potassium loss by gastrointestinal or renal routes. It is likely that Hank has multifactorial causes of hypokalemia that may be attributed to anorexia, diarrhea, and potentially urinary losses. For now, let's correct his hypokalemia with potassium chloride administration. We're going to use our Venomcrit calculator, and we will go to the potassium tab, and more specifically, to the intravenous potassium supplementation section. Here, we're going to enter his current blood potassium concentration, which is three millimoles per liter, his body weight, 30 kilograms, and our desired potassium rate of administration in milliequivalents per kg per hour. To determine our potassium rate of administration, we're going to look up table one. Since his current serum potassium concentration is three millimoles per liter, we will choose the potassium supplementation rate of 0.1 to 0.2 milliequivalents per kg per hour. Next, we're going to enter his total fluid rate. He's currently receiving 200 mL per hour to correct his 6% dehydration, as well as to account for his maintenance and ongoing losses. I can quickly calculate his total fluid rate by using the fluid rate calculator tab. To do so, I will enter his body weight of 30 kilograms, degree of dehydration, which is about 6%, duration of time to correct his dehydration over, and let's do 12 hours, and finally, expected ongoing losses per 24 hours, and we're going to put about 300 mils per day based on his previous diarrhea. As we can see, his hourly fluid rate will come down to about 200 mil per hour, as we mentioned earlier. Now, we are going to go back to our potassium management tab, where we also are going to enter the volume of our fluid bag, which is 1000 mils, as well as the KCL concentration, which in this case uh, is two milliequivalents per mil. As you can see, the calculator recommends us to add 15 MAQs or 7.5 mils of KCL to a one liter bag, as long as we are going to run it at 200 mL per hour to provide exactly 0.1 mq per kg per hour of potassium to this hypokalemic patient. 